Welcome to one of my oldest traditions, an empties video to close the year. Out with the old, in with the new if you want. As now is the time of reflection, I use this to look back at my first video ever, which dates back to December 2015. I will link it up here and if you still have issues with my video quality, I urge you to go back and watch that one just to see how far I have come. To give the video a little more structure, I will go through the different categories in order of appearance in my usual routine, with makeup, body and hair care coming right at the end. If you're new here, welcome! I'm Dr. Anne, a physician passionate about skincare and well aging. And the first two categories are actually empty. Yes, I have finished no cleansers and no toner since my last video in August. Not because I don't use them, but because I have too many open at the same time, as you can see here. Don't do as I do, do as I say. A good skincare routine doesn't need a ton of different products, but a few selected ones. But what can I say? I just love my lotions and potions. Serums I do have a few coming from two main categories. Chemical exfoliant ones with salicylic acid and antioxidant ones with vitamin C. The first is a lesser known one, the Kix 2% BHA plus 1% zinc concentrate that I picked up in Sweden. Kix is a chain similar to Sephora and I wanted to try some stuff from their house brand. It's a nice serum, but not my favorite texture. It feels like a gel rather than a serum and stays sticky. I didn't use it up on my face, but used it for body breakouts and as prevention for ingrown hairs after waxing the bikini zone, where the mixture of salicylic acid and zinc works extremely well for me. Obviously, only put it on the skin skin, not really close to your vulva if you try that yourself. The second one is a sadly no longer available classic, the Ordinary 2% Salicylic Acid Solution. I say sadly because it worked extremely well for me and I love the watery texture, but apparently it was too strong for some people to tolerate, which is why it has been off the shelves for around two years now. I have this one as a backup and have since found a replacement, the Geek & Gorgeous Perfectly Clear Serum, which has a similar texture and price point. And I'm glad I did, as the replacement The Ordinary just launched their 2% salicylic acid and hydro solution comes in a squall lane base, which kind of makes me doubt it will have the same watery texture. Speaking of Geek & Gorgeous, I have a bottle of their Sea Glow Serum here, the one that started my love affair with the brand right at the beginning of the year. I have raved about this time and time again. For me, this perfection in texture, effect and stability, and it has not only been repurchased, but also recommended to all my family and friends. I also tried the Timeless 20% Vitamin C and E and Ferulic Acid Serum, which is really good as well, but didn't quite come close in terms of texture. The last Vitamin C Serum I finished is the Omorovicha Daily Vitamin C Serum, that, due to the fact it uses a vitamin C derivative, sodium ascorbyl phosphate might work better for sensitive skin. For me, Geek & Gorgeous is the one I will repurchase. And because I didn't know which other category to put them in, I want to mention the Zitstika Killer Spot Clarifying Microneedle Patches. I adore them for these deep-set hormonal spots as they really bring the swelling and the pain down overnight, but after using them up couldn't bring myself to repurchase because they are a so expensive and b produce a ton of extra waste due to the way they are packaged. The microneedles are still great, so maybe one day we will see. Moisturizer and sunscreen empties. I will put moisturizers and sunscreens in one category, as I usually use my sunscreen for both during the day, at least if it is in the midst of winter. If I reach for a moisturizer at night, it is something lightweight, usually a gel, like the Pixi Clarity Lotion. Despite belonging to the Clarity line, this does not contain any salicylic acid, it is just a refreshing and slightly hydrating gel. Nice, but not spectacular, and despite the product claims, not mattifying at all. For sunscreens, I have actually finished three tubes of the Garnier Ombre Solaire Anti-Age Super UV SPF 50 with Hyaluronic Acid. 
It can sometimes pill when used on top of other products, but usually that was an issue for me and you really can't beat the value for money, which is important as you need to apply your SPF liberally. I liked it so much, I purchased the corresponding Garni Sensitive Expert Plus Ultra Light Sun Milk SPF 50 for the body. But while it's also really nice in texture, it can be a little sticky and a little harder to spread. Another great sunscreen, especially as long as it was still hot, is the Helioquia 360 Water Gel SPF 50. Not the oil-free version, I have that one too and don't like it half as much. I actually prefer this one in texture and finish, but it is also double the price when compared to Garnier and that adds up if it comes to sunscreen. The last one I finished is the Thank you Pharma Sun Project Light Sun Essence SPF 50, which is the most hydrating one out of the three and also the most cosmetically elegant. It really feels like a luxurious moisturizer, which leaves me a little doubtful about the actual protection provided. Now that might be completely unfair, but I felt best using this after summer was truly over and I didn't catch much sun during the day anywhere. Office sunscreen is what I like to call this kind of product. Despite not wearing much foundation, it just rubs off on the mask anyway, I have two empty bottles. I admit I had them for well over a year, so I made a conscious effort to use them when filming instead of keeping the last few drops until whenever face masks are no longer mandatory. The first one is the Maybelline Dream Satin Liquid in 01 Natural Ivory, a great everyday option that is pretty sheer. I didn't love it enough to repurchase it though. The Body Shop Fresh Nude Foundation in Bali Vanilla 020 is one that I did enjoy enough to potentially repurchase. I know the body shop acts as an MLM in some countries, but not here in Germany, we still get the regular store, so I didn't feel bad purchasing there. And the last one is a cool classic and my usual filming foundation, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation in Cool Bone. I used to wear it for every day as well, but it is more opaque than I prefer for regular use these days. I go foundation free so often I really can't deal with the full coverage ones anymore all day. Then I obviously have a mascara, the L'Oreal Air Volume Mega Mascara in black, which did not convince me. Too wet and it clumped together my lashes, so no repurchase. And the last thing I have in this category is the Sephora Collection Colorful Eyeshadow Eyeliner Multi-Stick in Taupe. You have to believe me as the writing is for obvious reasons no longer there. I had hoped to be able to use this one as standalone eyeshadow for quick makeup looks, but while the color is great and it is buttery to apply, it doesn't hold up very well on its own. If I try to wear it without a powder eyeshadow on top, it will fade within three to four hours, so I used it up as an eyeshadow base and will not repurchase. Now for my hair. You all know my love for Olaplex products, which are on the more expensive side of the spectrum. I balance that out with drugstore shampoos and conditioners that I, I admit, buy mostly based on scent. For this, I'm a huge fan of the Le Petit Marseillaise line that I pick up whenever I'm in France. Because that sounds fancy, I could easily get them here as well. Two years ago, my choice was their Strength and Shine shampoo with apple and olive leaves, mainly because the apple scent reminded me of the Shauma one we had as kids. I'm trying to get into shampoo bars at the moment though, so I will use up what I still have and then try to use those in addition to my Olaplex. For treatment rather than shampoo, I have the Inkyless Hyaluronic Acid Hydrating Hair Treatment that I love to keep my ends smooth and already repurchased, as well as the Inkyless Salicylic Acid Exfoliating Treatment, which I use around so once a month when I feel like my scalp needs a little help because there's too much dry shampoo packed on. And lastly, the body stuff. Another one from Le Petit Marseillaise, their Nutrition Body Butter. Not the fan, the shampoos are better. My tried and trusted Alverde body butter with macadamia nuts that you have seen several times. Somehow I wasn't able to find the big size anymore with 300 milliliters, just a small one with 100 milliliters, and I really hope that isn't a permanent change as that would create a lot more waste. Then the rare thing, my perfume. I don't often switch my scents and this one has been my main one for more than seven years now, Givenchy Ange de Mon Le Secret. It smells so much like me, I don't even realize I'm wearing perfume if I put it on. Already repurchased. 
And now, and that makes me very proud, two tubes of Pro Relax Conductive Gel that I use for my new face. I know I have promised you a review several times already, but I just don't seem to be able to use it consistently, which would make a review less than fair. This time though, fingers crossed, I have an impressive streak, so maybe the new year will finally bring the review that has been so long in the making. What are you going to get rid of moving into 2022? I will link to more videos you might find interesting on the screen and add links to my Instagram, blog and Patreon account in the description box. See you soon. Bye.